Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. And another heavyweight news mashup video today, starting with Tyson Fury, who says there will be a third fight with Deontay Wilder, no matter what, because as he told Sky Sports, I think the money is too big not to have it. This is the prize fighting game, and there's too much money in the pot for him not to want the rematch, even if he loses. I don't lose. I will be having a rematch either way. All I do is win unless I get a draw. Tyson Fury's comments to Sky Sports. So obviously very confident he's going to win this one against Deontay Wilder. Not looking at the possibility that he will be the one calling for the rematch because he does. Both of them have a rematch clause. And if Deontay Wilder does lose, obviously he's defended his belt, what, 10 times heading into this fight with Fury. I think no matter what, even if he got stopped, I think he would go for the rematch because I think his pride, I don't think it would allow him not to take the rematch if he lost the belt. I think that's just a reality of the situation. But I guess for Fury, if he does lose and it's by a brutal knockout, well, maybe he won't take the rematch. I mean, it's hard to say, but there is a third fight that's lined up. And I guess it depends somewhat how this result of the second fight goes. What do you make of it? But his trainer, Javan Sugarhill, doesn't want a decision in this fight. He wants to take it out of the judges' scorecards, saying that was a risk Tyson took in the first fight, not stepping on the gas and trying to win on points. He doesn't want to do that again. I don't want it. I wasn't raised that way. Emmanuel always taught me get the knockout. That's the only 100% way that you know you won the fight by taking it out of the hands of the judges. And he also told IFL TV, I thought Tyson did enough to win the first fight, even though he was knocked down twice. I'm not mad at the decision because I always thought don't leave it in the hands of the judges. And Fury has spoken about wanting to stop Deontay Wilder in a couple of rounds. And I think for a lot of fans, that feels like optimistic talk. And it's not that Fury couldn't get a stoppage um, against Deontay Wilder. I think a couple of rounds just does feel pretty early in the piece. And many, from what I can tell, feel if there is going to be a stoppage, it's likely later in the fight. But in all likelihood, Tyson Fury will rely on his boxing, his defensive prowess, and wait for some openings and potentially end up getting a decision on the cards if he can avoid the right hand from Deontay Wilder. Meanwhile, Joseph Parker says there needs to be an undisputed champion in the heavyweight division. He's told News Hub, we have been talking about this unified champion for such a long time, and I think it's important to give the fans what they want to see and find out who is the best. It would be cool to see a unified champion, but there are a lot of people involved to try and make this mega fight happen. And then later in the article, he talks about the first fight. Fury and Wilder saying the first fight was so exciting and controversial. A lot of people thought Fury won the fight on points, but a lot of people thought Wilder won because of the knockdowns. The rematch is going to be very interesting. Whoever executes their plan first or better will win that fight. I side with Fury. I love how he conducts himself in the ring, his boxing ability, his movement, his jab and combinations. I hope it's a great fight. And Joseph Parker, obviously a good friend of Tyson Fury. So no surprises that he's picking Fury to win that one. Andy Ruiz Jr. has again posted footage of him working out as he looks to return from his loss to Anthony Joshua in December 2019. He lost three of the four major championship belts. So he says they don't understand the vision, the refusal to settle, the desire to get your family right. Only hustlers understand hustlers. You can't stop a beast who's starving for a better life. Perhaps some language there was a little ill thought there with the whole starving line, but Andy Ruiz Jr. clearly didn't uh, live the hustler's lifestyle ahead of that Joshua rematch, ultimately eating his way out of the championship and Anthony Joshua getting a comfortable points decision in the end. And there has been talk and rumours of a potential matchup with Luis Ortiz on the horizon, but that's just at the moment, just rumour. So we'll wait and see what happens. Other names that have been bandied around, Dominic Brazil, also Chris Ariola, And that fight for a potential comeback fight might make a lot of sense, especially because uh, there's been talk of that fight for several years. But I would much prefer to see Ortiz and Ruiz squaring off, and that could happen in June. 
Meanwhile, Robert Hellenius has been training with Nathan Gorman, giving him rounds in Finland. And Hellenius has said on social media, preparing for war. Thank you, Nathan. Hellenius has an upcoming fight on March the 7th against Adam Kovnarski in the United States. That's a massive opportunity for Robert Hellenius to effectively come out of almost obscurity. If he beats Kovnatsky, he's certainly in the uh, conveyor belt for a potential title shot. Kovnatsky ranked very highly across the board. And Nathan Gorman, he said of the sparring in Finland, great sparring out here in Finland. And the Dillian White managed prospect uh, Alan Babich will be back in the ring on the 28th of February in Italy. His opponent is still TBA, but he says Milan, Alazi and Cloud, 28th of the second. Team Savage is after number four. Big year ahead. I'm taking everything. And Alan Babich, a big puncher. He's got a lot of talent, but sort of flying under the radar at the moment in the heavyweight division. I'm interested to see what his 2020 will look like. And obviously, Dillian White managing him. Where is he going to be guided? But uh, yeah, drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.